this is Leslie from Just Less Creations. I'm so excited to be back for 2023 in January doing a new cake pop build for you guys. This time we're going to look at Olaf. He will add such a cute character to our snowman collection. So we're going to break down all the components that we need in order to make him. He is super cute. I just love him. So won't you join me on this tutorial and we're going to just see how easy he really is to put together. So let's get started. Here I have some eggnog pound cake. Let me move this out of the way a moment. Roll in my house is two is one, one is none. We always do an extra one um, in case, you know, it falls off the stick or it cracks. Uh, sometimes just things happen, so we always do an extra one. So there's one. This is just a regular cookie scoop, a Wilton's cookie scoop that I use, bought it at Walmart in the Wilton section, so it makes nice, even, uniform cake pop balls. Guys, if you have any questions as I do this or if I'm going too fast, you always have the, the liberty to drop in the comment section what you need me to explain or go over a little bit more. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to give you insights and tips and tricks, so please, if you are here and you are watching, or even if you're watching the replay later, um, make sure you drop in the, in the comment section anything that you might have a question about. I'm going to roll and put pressure on my cake pop until I feel it come together. It'll squeeze out all the ex excess uh, air bubbles and anything that will cause my cake pop to fall off of the stick when it's on there. And then I'm gonna loosely release that pressure and I'm gonna roll back. Okay, that'll, that'll kind of bring that football shaped cake pop into a nice round ball. Okay, so here I have my round ball. Now Olaf's head is nice and, well, rectangle-ish in shape. So all I'm gonna do is create a V shape here with my fingers and I'm just gonna use my left hand to kind of level it there. And I'm just gonna roll, put a little pressure. I'm, gonna, I'm creating the chin portion. So I'm just making, I don't know if you can see it, I'm just creating that bottom half. Like so. Now I'm gonna do the same thing at the top. I mean this time I've got this bone tool, it's broke on one end, but I've got my bone tool and I'm just gonna use the softened side and push in. This will be where his eyes are. And then I just wanna round the top part off as well. make sure I'm not missing any comments. Jack, if you could just help me monitor the comments. All right, so here's where his nose is at. We're gonna take the same bone tool and I'm just gonna put little eye sockets in because if you know Olaf's head, he's got these little bulgy eyeballs and I just wanna create the sockets so that we can put his eyes in. And then I also wanna put a place on the bridge of his nose where that carrot nose is going to lay. I don't know if you can see. Let me turn it, maybe catch the highlights of it. So here's the bridge of his nose. And then if you look at him from the side, he actually has his, his tooth that actually um, hangs in the front. So I'm just going to create where his jawline is, like that. And then I'm going to use the side of my bone tool and just kind of flatten that out a little bit. And then I'm gonna again roll it in my hands to kind of smooth out, create that um, not, no sharp edge except for there on the bridge. All right. Just give it a little bit more depth. One more time. Just so I I'm. This is the third time I've done that because as you're pushing it, when you're working with cake pop dough, you don't want to put cracks in it. So if you do little bits at a time, that uh, cake pop dough will 
will move where it needs to move, where you want it to go, you can manipulate it and it won't create the big cracks in it that you have to really worry about. Now it does happen on occasion, so you just use your finger and fill in the cracks. But now you can see in my Olaf that he now has the structure of his face. You see where his eyes are gonna go, the dip for his nose, the bridge of his jawline, and then in his, if you can see where his mouth, the shadow in the, the mouth portion is going to be. All right, so we're going to take this one and we're going to go ahead and dip our stick. Here I've got some lollipop sticks over here. I've got my lollipop stick. I've already dipped it in white modeling chocolate. This is to create the barrier between the paper on the lollipop stick and the oils and the butters that I kept in my pound cake. Um, because I want the moisture in my pound cake. I want the flavor that it has. So I leave that stuff in, but I don't want my cake pop sticks to be turned yellow. So I create that barrier with just some plain white chocolate, no thinning agent whatsoever. I let it nice and thick. So I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna dip it into my melted white chocolate just at the very tip. I'm gonna use that melted chocolate as glue. And when I put my lollipop stick in, I'm gonna turn it clockwise and that wet chocolate's gonna meet that uh, cake pop dough and it's gonna meld in there. You'll feel it actually catch. You'll feel the friction from the chocolate catch on the cake pop dough. So I'm gonna turn it clockwise as I push it in until I feel it catch. And then I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn back and that'll just solidify that in there. And then I'm gonna wipe that excess off here and then I'm going to use my fingers and make sure I have all of my fingerprints off of there and then I'm going to let that sit over here and set up and we'll do that second one alrighty okay so at this point while we let those two set up we want the chocolate to firm up a little bit on the inside of that cake pop dough before we dip it completely so we're going to make the elements so we're gonna start out, I have a clay extruder. Guys, if you don't have a clay extruder, you need to get, you can buy one off of Amazon for 10 bucks. And it is, it comes with all these tips and it, I use them all the time. It helps to cut down a lot on making elements. All right, so inside my extruder, I have a tiny little dot that will give me a nice, long, little, thin rope. We're gonna work on the sticks at the top of Olaf's head. And this will give me a nice, little, thin rope. It's got some brown modeling chocolate in it. Again, if you guys don't know what modeling chocolate is, it is just a combination of um, corn syrup and melted chocolate. So that's what I have in here. Just melt the chocolate, add your corn syrup, you mix it together and it becomes this beautiful Play-Doh-ish consistency. Um, and that's what I make all of my elements from. There is a video in Just Less Creations if you have not uh, watched it before on how to make modeling chocolate. I encourage you go out there and do that if, if you haven't done that. All right, so we're gonna take this modeling chocolate. I've got about three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna do three of them and one, maybe a half an inch, two of three quarters and one half an inch. Let's go ahead and do another one for our second one because two is one, one is none. Those are extra ones, all right? And then I'm gonna cut out little tiny pieces about a quarter of an inch for his eyebrows. One is a little long. All right, we'll put this aside here. Now in my container here is corn starch. If you work with modeling chocolate and it starts to get uh, shiny, it's starting to melt in your hands. Corn starch will help take that moisture out of your hands. Um, so I'm just gonna put a little bit on my fingers to help that. And then I'm gonna take and roll one side to a nice little point. If I can keep it in my hands. And the other one, I'm just gonna round out the portion where I actually cut it so it's not so sharp. I want the rounded part for his eyebrows. There's one. Oops. There's
there's two. Do I have any questions? Am I going too fast? I'm trying to get this all done within an hour. Talk you through this because I know you can do that. The key to making character cake pops is breaking down all the elements into bite-sized components that you can actually manage. When you look at these character cake pops, they look so complicated, but yet when you break them down into manageable pieces, all of a sudden you can look at each component and say, I can do that, I can do that, I know how to do that, or that's an easy enough place to learn that. And so when you look at it from that aspect, these cake pop builds really are just little tiny manageable pieces to put together to make a nice little complicated character that will actually set you so far competitors you know so all right so now we're gonna we've got our eyebrows here we'll just move them aside and now we're gonna take our three little sticks and we're gonna take two of them and actually just cut one down through the center Again, another little right hand gadget that I have in my kitchen is a palette knife. I really recommend doing it for these nice little tiny um, pieces like this. So there's one stick and we're going to do one farther down on this one here, about halfway down. I'm just going to do just a little section. Let's go a little deeper on that one. So that becomes another little stick. And this one I'm just going to bring to a point at the top like so, and here's our three little sticks. We've got pieces of chocolate everywhere. All right, let's do these real quick. This is my tiny one, so we're just gonna cut halfway down. Just a little sliver. Can't pick it up. And now just round the top. I didn't do that for this one, let me do that. All right, this one we're just gonna cut about a quarter of an inch down on the top and separate it. So that's one. That's two. And this one we're just gonna create a point. That's three. All right, now while we let those set up, we're gonna take some orange, we're gonna make some noses. I'm just gonna take a little tiny ball. And then I'm just gonna roll one side to a point. My hands are sticky, my hands are hot. And then on the other side, I'm just gonna, Olaf's nose, I mean, it's a carrot, but he has this pump in his nose. So we wanna make sure we leave that in there. And on the end of his nose, it curls up. So there's one. Again, this is just modeling chocolate, orange modeling chocolate. And there's two. Now we're gonna make some eyeballs. Let me get my fingers off in a minute. We're gonna make some eyeballs. I'm just going to roll out a couple circles, little balls. They don't have to be, actually that's too big. Let's pull some of that out. I'm just gonna flatten it just a hair. I got a piece of fuzzy on my white chocolate. We don't want that. All right, let's do a couple more. I'm, again, I'm using cornstarch to flatten it just a little bit so it doesn't stick to my fingers. questions. Is there a video where you mention the tools that you use? Um, they pretty much all do. All, <laughs> all of my videos mention the tools that I am using. I don't have a video that specifically states these are all that I have. I have, I don't even know if I have a link on my website. I have 
I have a list of them, but I don't think I have a list of them here in Just Less Creations. I give it to my people that take my workshops or my um, mentorship program is a list of all of them. But in one of the, in, in all of my videos, if you watch them, I do talk about all of them all the time. So, but I don't have a specific list. Oops, just ruined that one. Let's try that again. <laughs> Whoops. That's why I like to do these. You were just eyeballing it. I was eyeballing it, yes. I was definitely just eyeballing it. All right, so now that we have those eyes, I need to make a couple pupils for them. And this is black modeling chocolate. And this one I'm gonna put through my, I have a KitchenAid mixer that has attachment for pasta and I'm just going to put it through there because I want this piece of chocolate to be super thin so I'm going to turn my mixer on paper thin. I don't know if you can see that. It's so thin it's sticking to my fingers. All right, so a little cornstarch on there. That'll help. And now it's got too much in that spot. I'm going to use a brush, a dry brush. It'll take that excess cornstarch off. And where's that? I have a number five Wilton's icing tip. To make my pupils, I usually use either a number five or number six depending on the kind of eye that I want. So right on, on Olaf, we're going to use a number five. And then I just have, this is a clay tool. Oh, there it is. And I'm just going to pop out four little pupils. I'm all about reusing tools that you already have if you're a, a cake decorator or have used these tools in the past. I'm all about recycle, reuse if you can. Oh, I need that one. And I've got some water right here. My paintbrush. And cornstarch all over it. All right. Got some water. So I'm using chocolate on chocolate. And my rule of thumb is if it is modeling chocolate that sticks off of your cake pop, use chocolate as a uh, glue. If it is going to lay flat on your chocolate, you just need water. It doesn't need a whole lot to hold it in place. And water will melt the sugar component inside your chocolate and it'll stick to itself. So here I'm just adding my eyeballs or my pupils to the eyes. If I can get it on there. And this is why I recommend one of these little tiny palette knives. Oh, that one stuck to my finger. And this one. And I'm just pressing it down just a little bit to make sure it's completely stuck on there. Alright, so now we have our eyes. We've got eyes, nose, we've got the hair tufts at the top. The last thing that we need to do is actually make his teeth. So I'm just going to take again my KitchenAid mixer and I'm gonna use the widest spot that I have on my KitchenAid mixer's uh, pasta maker because so, I want his teeth to be nice and thick. So I'm gonna use the widest point that I can get. All right, so here we have this. I've got black chocolate in it because I just did black and I put it in the same spot. So we'll remove that. 
All right, so I cut this little tiny geometric triangle shape. It'll make the perfect corner. Olaf's teeth um, actually come down at this angle on both sides. So I'm actually gonna use a, you can cut it if you wanted. You could just take your knife like so and cut it at an angle. If you feel comfortable doing that, by all means, you can do that. It's a little long for his teeth, so we'll take some off. So this is just another way that you can do it. So there I just cut it, um, but you can also take one of these and use that to create, and I'm gonna use the back of a paintbrush to actually pull that out like so and then I'm going to use that angle again to create the other side like that oh, I didn't cut the whole wheel it's stuck to my finger all right and then I'm just going to push down any excess on his teeth. So there's two ways you can do it. You can just cut it if you wish, or you can do it that way. Either way, you just need a set of teeth for him. Let's go ahead and remove all these pieces. All right, so now we have our components we need. Now we're gonna put them all together. So you're gonna see just how fast our Olaf comes together once we have all the components made. Now, if I am making, hi Tammy, welcome. Um, now, if we're making a lot of Olafs, then I would do all the pieces here and let the chocolate set up on the inside of our Olaf while we're making our components. And then it comes together quickly, but, um, and I don't think that it's set, it's warm in my house, so I think I'm actually, going to dip these, but I'm going to show you how to put things together from the ones that I dipped earlier because um, I don't want it to fall off the stick. So, all right, so let's go to our chocolate. I just stirred it. I use a double boiler method. That way I can control the heat. Um, I've melted my chocolate and then I've, it's just been sitting over top of the, the water that came to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, I shut it off, put my chocolate on it, I let it sit, it'll melt, but the chocolate melts at between 89 and 91 degrees. Your water boils at 212, so you have to let that all cool down to close to uh, room temperature as possible. Then you don't have to worry about cracks or anything like that. Uh, my cake pop dough is at room temperature, so we've got room temperature cake pop dough, we've got just about room temperature chocolate and it's super smooth you know it's ready to go when you can pour it it actually pours nice and easy and the key is where it has poured into your chocolate it's not mounding if it's not mounding and it's nice and smooth it, it just incorporates back in nicely you know that your chocolate is at that perfect temperature that you can dip your cake pop dough all right so in order to dip properly we're going to drop it in at a 45 we're going to pull it towards us and we're going to spin it at the same time how that's what you do for a normal round cake pop dough however because we put divots in here i don't want to create the air pockets um, in there so we're actually going to scoop chocolate into those divots first to make sure that the air pockets are not there and now we're going to drop it in we're going to spin it we don't want to keep it into the in the chocolate any longer than possible and then we're just going to tap that excess off we're just going to spin it and tap it lightly on your hands until um, gravity is done doing her work we're just going to spin it and tap it spin it and tap it spin it all the while i'm looking for air bubbles starting to um, show up there's one right there one right there. Now, for those of you guys who have never watched my video before, I'm going to explain this real 
uh, quickly. Those of you that have watched my videos before, I'm sorry for the repeat, but you guys know that it's a stickler with me. Air bubbles are not your friend, get them popped. Um, if you are making cake pops for a party or friends or a client or something, and you've done them uh, and there's air pockets that break, it can create opportunity for oxygen to get to your cake pop dough and um, begin the bacteria growth process. Not cool, not cool. Do not do that. Make sure you pop those air bubbles. Um, all right, so right now I'm just gonna take my uh, palette knife and I'm just gonna help gravity with what's pooling at the bottom of my cake pop right now. I'm just gonna help it along. And then I'm gonna wipe that excess off on the bottom. And then I'm gonna sit it over here and let it set up. Okay, we're gonna let these two sit up, set up the chocolate, and we're gonna grab one of the ones that we that I did last night. So I would let this sit until the chocolate completely dries. So on this one, we're gonna go ahead and put our elements in. First thing that we are going to do is, oh, let's do this first. We're gonna start with the underside. So I'm gonna do his mouth. In this one, I have a midnight blue luster dust that I just painted um, to create that dimension on the inside of his mouth. Um, and I didn't like, I'll be honest, I was lazy last night doing it, so I didn't add any um, al clear alcohol to it to actually make uh, um, like a paintable one. I just used the luster dust. But today I think I dug out my um, clear vodka and we're gonna add a little bit to the luster dust. I'll pour it in here first. I'm gonna use my paintbrush. If you do not, I don't have blue poppy paint, I'm out. Um, but if you have luster dust, you can create something that you can paint with. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of clear alcohol with my luster dust and it'll create that nice little paint that I'm looking for that I can use on Olaf. I might have used a little bit too much there. We'll see if that works. Never works the way I want it to. All right, so I'm just gonna create. Yep, I'm gonna have to put, I've got more alcohol than luster dust. He'll have a big smile. He'll have a big smile. You're right, Jack. <laughs> yeah, it's too watery. I need to add more luster dust. See how it's just pulling away at that chocolate? Yeah, I gotta add more luster dust. And that's why we do these things live, guys, so that you can see how, if you have a problem, we can work through that. And I'm okay with that. Because, you know, when we work with chocolate, it's, it never works the way you plan it in your head. And the idea is not to get frustrated. It's not to get panicky, you know, it's figure out what your problem is, know why you're having that problem, and then be able to do a workaround. So I added too much, so the workaround is to add more luster dust. So that's what I'm doing here. All right. Oh, Jack says if the live stream is jumpy, he apologizes. We're having an issue with our network here. I'm not quite sure why, if it's the network or the software. All right, so that's much better. And we'll finish up this side over here. Okay. 
we've done that part, and we're gonna take his teeth, we're gonna glue it on. Now this sticks out from his head, so we are actually going to use um, melted chocolate as our glue for this instead of water, because I wanna make sure that that chocolate has a nice firm hold onto the cake pop. So I just put it right on the tippy top, and then of course you'd wait till that is dry of course i didn't so we'll see what happens i'm just going to put his teeth right here in the center and all i'm doing is taking my knife and pulling off that excess chocolate so now we have his tooth on there, teeth on there. We're gonna take, where's my paintbrush at? All right, so behind his eyes is actually, if you look at his picture, um, he's got, when we add luster dust behind his eyes, it gives a 3D dimension look. So what I have here is a nice silver. So I'm just going to use it dry with a dry paintbrush and I'm just going to create just a little depth perception here. I mean already just by doing that he looks more 3D. So I'm just adding a little bit here and it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, let's move this out of the way. Now we're going to go ahead and use use water for these eyes because um, it's going to be down inside that little eye socket. So I'm going to grab my paintbrush again and just use water. And we're going to just drop it into the eye socket. Maybe. And we're going to do the same thing with the other one. Oops. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and use his nose, but because his nose actually sticks off of the bridge of um, the cake pop, we're going to use chocolate to make sure we hold that on. Now, I don't know if you can see it with the camera, but I have all this excess white chocolate right here. You see that? I'm going to use my knife and scrape some of that off. I don't need all that excess on there. All right, the other side looks good. So here we go, guys. It's already looking just like Olaf and it's coming together so very quickly. All right, so all we have left to do is put these sticks on the very top, and again, I'm going to use chocolate. I'm going to just put a blob of chocolate right across the top of his head for all three of these to stick in there, like so. And then I'm gonna take the longest one and stick him right in the middle. And then one goes on either side. not holding that in the right position before I put it up there. All right, and there you go, guys. It's just as, whoops, I didn't push him down far enough. <clears throat> now I'm just going to take my knife, and again, I'm just going to smooth out that wet chocolate.
All right, and the last, oops, I got white chocolate here. All right, and the last thing we're gonna do is drop his little eyebrows on there. I'm gonna use just a little bit of water right across the top of his eyes on his forehead. And I'm just gonna drop them on there like so. Push them down, one on the other side. And get a hold of it. Use my knife. I squeezed that piece of chocolate so it put a point where I didn't want to have a point. So I'm just going to cut that little piece off, make it nice and flat there. All right, there we go. And guys, we've just made Olaf. Okay guys, here you go. We've made Olaf and we broke it down into very easy, manageable pieces. Just remember, you need to make modeling chocolate. I guess you could use fondant. I don't care for the flavor of fondant, so I use modeling chocolate. And you just need a black, a white, a brown, and an orange. You can do this. Um, so I encourage you to do it. I also encourage you, if you do make him, a, take pictures and drop them in the group because I like to celebrate your wins with you. You guys are creative. You wouldn't be here if you weren't creative and wanna try this. So I know you can do this. All right, until next month, I will see you guys later. Have an amazing January and know that um, you can do this. I believe in you guys, so you can do it. I'll see you guys later.